are going to be live. We are going to be live. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> and someone's on mute. All right. All I, all I heard was you through the intro. All right, you guys ready? So who are we doing tonight? Let's get the 30-second thing over with so we don't get hit by... Thousand Strikes. Yeah. So we're going over the revolutionary, the fanatic rebel uh, Saw Guerrera. <laughs> Otherwise, some people <laughs> call him a terrorist. How dare you, sir? These, these have not been founded to be true. These are, these are just slanderous comment sir that's not what you label a cell group <laughs> he is a hero but let's see here we go Saul Guerrero was a resistance fighter who led the Onderon rebels he made a name for himself fighting against the confederacy during the clone wars he and his sister Stila Guerrero were one of the main reasons for the liberation of their home world during the clone wars they asked and received help from generals Anakin Skywalker Obi-Wan Kenobi Commander Asaka Taunu, and Clone Captain Rex. However, during the fight to liberate their homeworld, his sister Stila would die. Her death was a death he never got over and blamed himself to the day he died. As the Republic turned into the Empire, he would play a major role in the fight against them. Later, Saul found a young Jin Orso and raised her as his daughter alongside his new resistance group, the Partisans. The Partisans was an extremist organization that used terrorism tactics in their fight against the Empire and was one of the first cells that formed the Rebel Alliance. He was involved in early campaigns of the Rebel Alliance, but his more extreme tactics had come in stark contrast to those of Alliance leaders Bel Organa and Mon Mothma. He eventually based his organization on the planet Jedha, where he would later die. When Jedha City was destroyed by the Death Star, Saul told Jin he was done running and would stay on Jedha and was killed by the aftermath of the blast. Tonight, we discuss one of the most controversial figures in the Rebel Alliance, some would even say a terrorist, Saul Guerrero. Join us. And that someone is apparently a Canadian who <laughs> just smearing his good name all over the place. Oh, I can't let him get running around like that. <laughs> No I problem. had actually completely forgot that he was on uh, Clone Wars, the uh, the video game, until I was oh. doing some research last night. Yeah, oh, I, until I thought he was on Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's what's it called? A um, it's funny how much he he's in a ton of different stuff, but it's also like yeah. you kind of forget, you don't really acknowledge that he's in so much, especially for such a, like a side character, right? And yeah, and it's also so different. Weird. Yeah, and he looks different every single. Actually, he does look different every single time because, as we'll see later too, that in two of his different animated appearances, or three of them, his eye is, is a different color each time for some reason. Oh, seriously. Um. Oops. We're not going to be seeing later, by the way, because this clip's never um, actually rendered. Oh, but... I have a picture. I have a picture. Don't worry. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say, because the clips that I made, for some reason, <laughs> StreamYard has decided to help Disney block me because I'm not rendering any videos for that one. Um, yeah, so what I take away from Saul Guerrero is um, just the way they did it. Like, I think if you go back and watch his, his original appearances on The Clone Wars, they didn't seem like they... Um, we're like, this guy is going to be somebody we're going to have weave throughout the history from now on. He's going to pop here and there when you need kind of a terrorist mm. because he was kind of a like a screw up who was living in the shadow of his sister. And then even as that arc started going, he started getting more TV shows. You could tell that they were like, OK, now we're going to actually make him not so much a screw up. And then out of nowhere, because it really seemed like they were going to make the sister be more important, which is, you know, understandable for Disney these days, especially. And out of nowhere, they gave him like the super villain arc. His yeah. sister dies, kind of his fault. <laughs> he blames himself, and then boom, there's your orange story to be uh, an extremist because now it's on full turn, basically. <laughs> no, he's just misunderstood. Yes, yeah, yeah. I I do also think that it's weird that he's one of those characters that um. 
not only has his looks changed, but it's been dramatic. Like he was like, I mean, not that this is, I guess, is important in this day and age, but he was slightly light skinned Hispanic gentleman in his first appearance. And then he's mm-hmm. a, a African-American gentleman by the end of his death. Like he went through one hell of a uh, and, change. And like I said, the eye colors and then his whole look too goes from like little goatee, buzzed hair to bald, like clean shape. And then like completely decrepit, like his hair is going wild. He's like losing his mind basically. I would say I would say consistent. Whenever you have a character that I enjoy, I actually enjoyed his character. Um, and then you change him, whether you make him white, black, girl, animal, alien, two heads. I usually like rolling my eyes because I want to know why. That being the case, uh, the actor obviously who plays him in the movie is uh, you know one of the better actors and and that we have in the world. Oh, yeah. But I actually like the way they just made him like a grouchy, dusty ass. He has to have a breathing mask because he has been blown up, shot, <laughs> stabbed, set on fire. <laughs> like everything is like, and at the end, he's kind of like, you know what? I bring it, bitches. I'm done. Like, let's just uh, let's turn off the breathing mask, throw our hands up run. in the air, and, and say, let's go. <laughs> you would expect that. He's, he's had such a long, rough life that yeah, you would expect he'd be in that condition. Let me tell you something. There's nothing that says that oh, that uh, Disney won't have him show up. As a head inside of a bottle on top of a robot, and he was like, "I'm still kicking, I'm still." Kicking. <laughs> I don't know. That was a pretty big explosion. <laughs> <laughs> if it had been one thing, I guess if he was down in the catacomb. But you know, that's that's an action movie waiting to happen. That guy just from the explosion, he was shot back to the catacombs, and the catacombs collapsed, which saved him. Like you know, that's a, that's an action movie thing right there. Now, was the planet actually destroyed? No, just the city. Just the city. Right. It was like a one percent blast or something. Single wow. actor, uh, single reactor ignition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one percent of the power. Uh, Alderaan was the first. Was true first. Yeah. How they had the wreck. <laughs> the make sure they when they retcon, they didn't retcon it again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, no, Drugger is it definitely. Uh, you know. Like it's great because you have all these really peaceful re- rebels who are like you know I just talking about Mama Athma already where she's like pacifist does not want fighting Bail Organa I'm not a separatist and now you have uh, Saw Guerrera yeah I'll I'll happily like commit like if the Geneva Convention existed in uh, in Star Wars he would be one of the guys outside the uh, outside the place bombing it basically and maybe we'll see that dynamics play out in Andor. Pretty fun, yeah. Him and Mon Mothma, like we have to take a small a glitter and duct tape break uh-huh. to say hello, my friend. How are you doing? I appreciate you listening. Awesome. One of the best to ever do it. Um, yeah, and that's it, right? That's that's the that's the skinny. That that's the that's the scam of people who are in charge. It doesn't matter, like here in America, if you're the most liberal, soft hearted, like Democrat or the most patriotic warlike right-winged uh nut job or whatever or in europe or whatever they always when that book gets written 50 years later they always had a Saul Guerrero somewhere that they kind of yeah. you know got got fired up got worked up and sent into the jungle <laughs> like that, and that's no different from the rebels you know yeah. what i mean like for all of mom mata's uh talk and everything they sure turned a blind eye to some of the atrocities he was willing to commit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you you bet you best to to follow someone who's actually doing it, walking the talk. You know, like he literally <laughs> does what he's going to do, not just talk about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not just hiding in the little ship and space. Yeah, but that was definitely respected, respected more in the field. He was definitely a political. Uh, problem waiting to happen like if she had kept going for like 20 more years there would have been some upstart that says do you care to talk about your relationship with saul guerrero you you seem to have been very close with him when he you know in the in the year 4741 on the planet whatever he committed genocide, <laughs> he committed genocide. <laughs> <laughs> and you did nothing about it like you can see it happening like that's totally gonna happen uh let's see i was gonna actually add so what else you have to say about him? His heart's in the right place. <laughs> um, it might be out of his body somewhere. Well, I find it interesting. Like, I, was I a resistance where, fighter who led the Okay, there we go. Sorry, I was going to play that while we we're talking. 
Okay. Well, I'm, I, I find it interesting with him and the, um, what's it called? Uh, basically, like, sponsored by the Jedi just to, 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 to fight. They're like, here's yeah. some guys train you. Here's some weapons. Here's some, uh, you know. Right. Here's the money. Now, here, here's where I usually give our, our uh, daddy, Lucas. By the way, I just want to point out that I'm cl- clearly can't talk either. <laughs> uh, clearly, I'm not talented enough, smart enough, or brilliant enough to come up with Star Wars all by myself. This is obviously belongs to Star Wars. And I'm just grateful you allow me to eat at your table from time to time. Now. That being said, this is where I get on Daddy Lucas for having revised history where he's like, what actually I was doing, I was expressing my concern over, you know, the way they're treated in Gambia or something like that. No, you weren't. Uh, Here's the thing, though. This story, I 100% believe they would take inspiration from some of the shenanigans because his story sending in, well, we don't want to get involved. However, we'll send you three or four of our best fighters to train you how to take the battle <laughs> like it's totally from the american like cia playbook <laughs> where we're just oh, gonna yeah. send in some trainers <laughs> well here's the funny thing i was well i was looking into saw Guerrero, like it's just general background stuff like where, what what why was he created etc cetera, etc cetera. his name do you ever acknowledge where his name is very similar to <laughs> yeah uh fung uh, fung oh oh O'Shea. You talking about him from Cuba? Uh yeah, Shea Shea Guerrero and Saw sorry, Shea Guevara and uh, Saw Guerrero. Shea Guerrero yes. That's exactly yes. where they took the name from, which is hilarious. They were calling him when they were doing um so originally obviously we saw him in Clone Wars. That's where we first saw him. Yeah. But originally he was actually supposed to appear in um the cancelled Star Wars Underworld series that um Lucas wanted to do the live action series. That's where he was first created for, actually. Underworld, like with the vampires. Absolutely. <laughs> and then um, ultimately, they just didn't they didn't follow through, and then now he brought him in the Clone Wars. But imagining um, that. Funk comics. I just want to say hi. Sorry. That you had basically this character who was going to be in the live action and they brought over to Clone Wars. And I lost track of what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you were comparing him to some of the Cuban fire uh, freedom fighters. And then you were saying, imagine if you brought him over from live action. But if that doesn't jig your memory, I will say this while you think about it. When I oh, watched the video. That's why it, it was oh, originally why he, why he probably seemed more Hispanic than he actually than they ended up going down. Probably, yeah. They're going directly to that. Instead. And, and we're not here to have that fight because there's enough 20-year-olds who smoke the weed who wear Shea Guevara shirts. But if you ever talk to people or read a book about people who escaped Cuba or escaped uh, some of the other places he left, which people don't know about him, is that he went to other countries and caused mayhem there too, not in such a nice way. Uh, this also, I believe, is the same thing would happen here. History would probably <clears throat> say that this gentleman... Uh, would be eh, kind of like unfavorable to the ones in power, but maybe the people on the ground, they were saying he was something else, you know, and if you didn't like him, then maybe you were the part of the problem kind of situation, I believe would be the exact same thing. But the funny thing I will say was I was watching this, right? And we're past that now. So like, especially other parts of the world, they might not be as aware of Cuban history as we are since they're like, you know, right over over the water right there. But I was watching this video and I went to the comment section and the funny thing is there was a guy from Russia. There was one talk of um, Osama bin Laden. There was another guy that I think is a Chinese guy. I'm assuming um, I didn't really understand who he was. And there's another guy and all these people were from that country. And they were like, they were saying how crazy it was that obviously Disney made this character after fill in the blank or wherever part of the world they're coming from. I found that very interesting. Um, that you know, and of course, there's some people who are clearly it's you know, th- th- like we said, Shay, but it was just it was interesting that people were like sh- showing you how s- how the similar it was to all these other like freedom fire slash terrorists around the world. And I was like, yeah, I think they kind of <laughs> all follow the same pattern here, man. <laughs> all in the same truth. What uh, what what computer game is that from? That snippet. <clears throat> oh, that one is Jedi Fallen Order. The oh, yeah, uh, Fallen Order. 
Man, I gotta get into that game. I have it that. is amazing. I have not stopped. He's actually in it a lot. I totally forgot he was in it. But then once I remembered he was in, I was oh yeah, you actually talked to him a little while now. Yeah, he's like, in the Kashyyyk, actually... uh, that's Kashyyyk section of the game. Yeah, he's fighting, helping the Wookiees be free. Uh, yeah, I'm probably actually going to start playing that on uh, stream pretty soon. Yeah, that or YouTube, I haven't decided yet, because I was going to play it mm-hmm. um, getting prepared for part two. But it's not going to be out for a while, but still getting prepared for that. It's a great oh, yeah. game. You ought to play it. So you're looking forward I think to it's a game that you should probably one? play just because of how popular it is. I think that's going to be kind of like a template for the future. They're going to base, I think, a lot of stuff on that game and that style of that game because of how popular it was. Uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing him in Andor. Uh, good chance. I suppose he's going to be younger. He's going to be more like... He's not like how we saw him in live action. He was just basically... Well, there you go. <laughs> there he is right there. On key. Perfectly timed that. You're welcome. I'm the greatest editor ever. <laughs> That was his pre-perish. Because I can, I can already guarantee if he's in that room with a whole bunch of air rebels and some snooty rebel says something, he's probably just in the back end them, right? He's gonna just hit them across the face and walk out. Something, yeah. Maybe. Here's the best part about his 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 character. If you watch the live action one, like he spent money to have this armor suit that keeps him alive, but he took the time to put a random flag on his back. Just so everybody knows who he is. He's got to have his flag slash cape to go you with have style. To have drip, you know. But then he also had this like bootleg, uh, like air breathing mask. Not like you know all the other people we see who need them, where they actually have them like permanently attached to their face. He just pulls it out like a grandma who smoked too many cigarettes, and she's like ninety, and she's like, "Baby, hold on." <laughs> okay, come give grandma a hug. Like, what is that? You don't have a permanent one attached to you. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he goes to sleep, he just has a little bands. Yeah, he just says, you know, it's got it's like sleep apnea, basically, is what he's doing. He put a sleep apnea machine on on his back, and then, and like that's that's not very intimidating. Uh, All right. So, do you have anything else? Um, what what did he do in Rebels? I'm trying. Um, to he pissed off the Rebels because he was his hologram comes up and he's talking about we should commit more, uh, commit more terrorist crimes and bomb people. So in in Clone Wars, he was introduced because his planet, like basically a guy, um, got with the uh, Confederates, Confederates, Confederation, and basically their homeworld got kind of taken over by the Confederation and like put a the wrong guy on on power, and so him and his sister help remove that guy, and then because during the fighting he obviously got hardened from fighting because it's pretty nasty fight, and then uh, when his sisters died, that's when he decided that. They all got to go. Everybody dies tonight is what he decided. And that's when the terrorist was born, I guess. <laughs> so why did he adopt? So why did he what? Why did he adopt? Uh, what's the name? So that's the thing we don't really know is that he his relationship with uh, yeah. a Galen. Basically, they were they knew each other. He must have like when Galen was talking, I was thinking about, you know, Betraying the Empire, he probably got in touch with him and started talking. But I don't know how the is relationship he cast developed. For Andor, sorry, is he cast for Andor, Galen? Uh, no, but technically, at that point in time, he would be. No one would know that he's alive, and they, he was just at the base, working in secret. So, yeah, they, I mean, they haven't really said. I don't know. Maybe there's a book I haven't read, but. I'm assuming that that guy was obviously very important. He was like, you know, strategic weapons kind of thing. And he probably got in touch because you always got to remember the rebels are pretty famous, even back when they were just the Republic of like sitting on their hands and not doing anything. That's what caused half of the Jedi who left, left. That's what caused, you know, this guy to exist because they're not doing enough to stop people. Um yeah. And so I, I think I'm assuming he reached out to him, but but clearly they had some kind of friendly relationship because, you know, oh, raise like, his daughter, yeah, yeah, he wrote he raised his daughter as his own, uh, pretty young. It wasn't like he knew that she was going to be like a hard killer or anything. Um, I mean, unless he would just like listen, we're a small band of terrorists, we know all, all hands on deck. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe that's why. But I think there was some kind of friendliness, obviously, because mm-hmm. even in the movie, it seemed like he. He cared, and and you know, obviously, he got this clip that we're showing now to his daughter uh, through him. So, 
So I'm sure what's it called? We're gonna get something in Andor, and you're probably near the like. Obviously, they said it's gonna be at least three seasons. They've really re- confirmed the show for. So I'm yeah. sure by near the end of it, we're gonna get the we're gonna get more probably talk between him and Galen. Uh, yeah, but any other time he really showed up, I mean, you know what's gonna happen? He's he's helpful for a second, and then but you know, because so you're like, oh, look at that. Yeah, he slides in there and helps somebody, but by the end of it, he's lecturing everybody because they're all a bunch of soft little pansies and they need to be, you know. Half measures, you know. <laughs> Slapping them is not going to do anything. If you cut the head off the leader and literally parade it around the, the square on a stick, that'll get their attention. <laughs> You're like, whoa. <laughs> but cool, yeah. I think he's a cool character. Uh, he's somebody I hope they expand on a little bit more because right now they just kind of used him as like a, I don't like a plot device a little bit, I think. You know what I mean? You need like, to have hey, a bad either. rebel. You need to have a bad oh, rebel in the bunch. I can't hear you. Oh. I can no hear you. How about now? I can. Is that me? Yeah, it's you. Kachung? Yeah, I, I saw oh, no. I don't hear the one of you. Ah! Oh, man. What have you done? <laughs> we lucked you out. <laughs> ah. Don't look behind the curtain. Never look behind the curtain. I have no idea. Well, we can talk oh, about you know what whatever we want right now. You can't hear us. Right so. <laughs> no, I got it. Uh, no, the look. my wavelength went into sleep mode. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, checked, I, I checked to see if Galen was in. Uh, he's not cast at all. So could be a surprise too. Maybe. But um, I think yeah, it's, I hologram. Think it's, the, it's hologram. Yeah, <laughs> the classic hologram cameo. <laughs> Uh, they can they can film the actor at his house and he just stands in front of a green wall and just. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but I think I think it could be I, I think it could be uh, good to expand on him a little bit more than they have. Yeah. Especially with like where we are, it's gonna fit a good a good point in time where we can you know, we can delve more into the characters like progression between. Well, all right. Do you want to see what his appearances are in all the movies, TV shows, and books? Oh yeah, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be surprised at what property comes up the most. <laughs> I don't know if anything surprised me anymore with some of the decisions they make, but we'll see. Hold on a second here. Let me. Oh, I gotta share my screen. <coughs> now, was it? It says 24 episodes. It's 12 episodes. So, and the second season, obviously, there are 12. Diego's cast for 24, so they're just assuming there's a second. Yeah, because it confirmed a second already. Uh, up to the top. Awesome. Middle. There you go. Oh, there it is. Why, why, what's going on? There's no slideshow. What did you do? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> what, immediately, what did you do? <laughs> well, when it was done by another person, it was a lot smoother. I'm just, but you know, oh, I'm not okay. gonna. <laughs> well, you know. I like this pit painting though. That's cool. Yeah, I was looking up saw background, saw Greer backgrounds, and I had about three options, and this is one. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. All right, there we go. So yeah, so on the left, so you have his appearances. So obviously, movies. He's only shown up in Rogue One. Clone Wars. So it's funny because like he shows up in so much stuff, but he doesn't actually show up that much in them, just briefly. But makes a big, like big impact. Like so, he plays in Clone Wars yeah. for four episodes, the same arc, the one that we um that we saw with the sister. Rebels. He shows up in the Ghost of Geonosis two part episode, as well as the um, two part in the Name of Rebellion. Mm. After that, Bad Batch. He shows up in the first episode. And then upcoming wise, we're going to be seeing him in Andor and possibly Bad Batch season two. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> and then on the right, so that's all the different looks of uh, Guerrero. So yeah, there we go. You know, this he looks, really this interesting. This is the most interesting. Maybe it's just the lighting, but this is the most interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, so- this is like a really bad shot. Like yeah. <laughs> because he actually looks pretty close to him, but that shot does not. <laughs> and then here, by the time of Rebels, they have an idea who they want the actor to be, I think, because they clearly jump from here to here pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And and they got rid of his like uh, space alien turquoise green eyes 
for a brown he really, eyes. He really had a love hate relationship with hair. Yeah, he uh, goes bald, has a goatee, has a big beard, just a mustache. He's all over. The- he is. He is well, uh, secretly he's wanted. supposed to be a fashionista. Well, he's wanted, you know. So you got to change your look up a lot. A lot. By this time, people can see he's in a big giant metal armor thing. So he's like, I'm gonna let it go natural. Which I'm just saying, I might have, <clears throat> I might be biased here, but I, I prefer the let it go wild look. Glitter, yes, he does look like Forrest Whitaker because he actually <laughs> is Forrest Whitaker. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, comic wise, like I said, uh, you can be surprised he shows up in Rogue One. Um, so his first appearance and cover is issue one. Again, he shows up issues two, three, and five, and then he shows up on two variant covers: one for the movie one and fifteen variant for Rogue One. As well as the uh, Bounty Hunters 18, the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary. And that, again, is a Rogue One cover. Oh, he made it on one of those? Yep, yeah, as Rogue One. So he's basically Rogue One the comic. This is all I have is this one. <laughs> all right. Which is the one right there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was fun too with the Rogue One comic. I completely forgot as I'm going, as reading through it again. Is that a lot of moments in the movie they have the dialogue and they and they're saying something just like they're having the dialogue go and in the comic they just put they put different images to it that we never saw so like when Jin is ex- mm. describing how like oh he gave me a loaded gun and he he left me he just told me to stay and he he went he went off they're showing like the moment that happens where he's digging through stuff gives her a blaster and just leaves. Oh, yeah. I, those Noto covers are so cool. Mm-hmm. And then that's him there yeah. meeting Jin again, you know. Yeah. He also looks different there too. And then another different look at him. Can I ask a question though? If you have a full body armor, right? Cool. Tubes, electronics, one foot metal. You can't get you can't get better than hippie sandals. Like seriously, you can't do better I than hippie you, sandals. He's rocking the Birkenstock. He's got he's the uh, fashion <laughs> space Birkenstocks. So this is a fun, this is actually I like this a lot. There's a panel there where he's talking to Jin, and he's saying how uh, the reason why he he got rid of her. And he's like, oh, they started figuring out that you were uh, daughter of imperial scientists, etc. But it's showing him like taking care of her, training her, and there's there's a scene there of him and Bale going at each other with Leia in the background there as well. So his own little Leia, personal Leia, laying Leia met um, Jyn Erso and all that, and then um, his perspective when he l- walked out on um, on Jin. So definitely some more characterization for him there. Man, Leia got around, huh? <laughs> got to go to the meeting for her separatist dad. Running, running through. I kind of wish I had got the series. I know I say that a lot, but I like the movie, so there's no reason why I didn't, other than I just figured I had forever to buy cheap yeah, Star Wars comic. Yeah, a movie adaptation comic of a spinoff Star Wars movie. Why would anyone expect this to go up in price? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this wow. is the scene where he dies, um, and he tells them to leave. He's going to stand there pounding, pouting his lips. <laughs> but there's uh, the next pa- next page is going to be interesting. It's a um, – so obviously in the movie, he just stares at the explosion coming and just him staring at it. But here they get some extra context where it's him thinking of his sister when it comes. Mm-hmm. And obviously look at how he looks in that flashback. Um Definitely a lot different than the Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't look behind the curtain. There's nothing to see here. Wow. Looking more Looks like funny. Ice Cube's kid. Hey, can we even talk about She doesn't look like that either if you look closely either. She doesn't have the same hairstyle or anything. They changed her up. She looks like, uh, what's her name? Santa Staros more than her. <laughs> That's all right. And then, yeah, and then this is the last time we see him. He It's a flashback again when Jin's giving her a big speech. That's so cool, that color. Man, I love him. Great but movie. Yeah. And and oh, I like that way he looks in that. That looks cool. Yeah. So there's the two variants. The left is the 1 in 15 movie, and the right is the... Um, huh. Is that the movie poster for that? 
That was one of the posters, yeah, but that was the one that was used for hey, that's Mac. kind of a cool poster. I kind of like that. It is, it is just the Star Destroyer coming down, yeah. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah, that's a cool poster. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, I was seeing the prices on the 115 actually weren't that bad. So, What do you mean by not that bad? Like, they weren't, like, you're not expecting, like, the ridiculous prices, right? Right. Mm. Oh, well, like, like, cheaper than the, the first print? Yes. Cheaper right. than the regular one. Huh. Uh, yeah, so here, he has basically no figures. He has the Rogue One Black Series figure on the left. The God, I hate when you put the Black Series up there, because I'm trying to, like, not collect them. <laughs> but... Does he have sandals? I hope so. We can't see his feet. He does on this one. Look at that. Mina, Mina, me the one on the right. He's got a sandal right there. Look. Oh yeah. Just one. Well, Rob Just one. Blackfield designed the box on the left, and then yeah, on the right they had a Jedi Revolt set, which is a four-person set. I think that the three point fives. And um, yeah, so he's there. Get those with the plastic windows while you can. The plastic windows. Yeah, I got rid of it. Super cool. I just uh, we're not gonna talk about what I just did on Macari right now. We're just gonna ignore that. We're going to the next thing. What you're looking for all you want uh, just this one right here because I don't have uh, this one, this one, or this one, and that that would do just fine. Well, you got to like <laughs> the 400 people that are watching are all doing the same thing, so you better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's actually yeah. not too bad. You said it's a four piece thing. It was like 20 bucks. Okay, that's good then. I, I mean, I didn't offer that, of course, because, because I'm a cheap and poor person, so I offered him less to see if he'll take it, of course. Of course. But yeah, so the left there is the that's pop kind of figure. Cool it actually pop. looks really good. Yeah, that's a cool pop. Sandal, confirmed. <laughs> no, they even put a pot in his hair. They did. Yeah, that's part. actually a that is actually a really well done pop. I actually like that pop. That's a cool pop. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy one because right. I'm not going down that path either, but yeah, and I had to because that's all I could find for toys. I had to find something else. I searched up Saul Guerrero toys, and the Hot Wheels car came up pretty quick with a giant <laughs> missile on the top. <laughs> ah, good job, Hot Wheels. <laughs> what? Good is job. That? What yeah. is that? <laughs> is it? It's the terrorist movie. <laughs> so, yeah, it? it's tanks. Terrorism all day, car. every day. All right. When I wake up, it, about Built it. The Jedi. There might be one more panel. And then they made sure they they had to have that in there his uh, CPAP machine too. So that's well, it's that it's very really diver yeah, diverse, right? Reach everyone. Oh, so okay, so that's it then, yeah. Yeah, it's a very very limited. Obviously, most of it revolves around Rogue One, and soon enough, everything's gonna revolve around Andor. So we'll see more stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yeah, we'll have to add to his story at some point. Is he gonna have two legs? Yeah. Oh, well, we to. see how he loses the uh, the leg. Maybe. How he gets the robot leg? Spoiler alert: That's actually not robot. That's just a really cool shoe that looks like a robot foot. He's not real. He stepped on a landmine. Anakin. Anakin. <laughs> Anakin. All right. So news and comic books. What we got going? Well, we got big announcements. So the cat, the cast. Wait a minute. Is this going to be? I'm sorry, I totally interrupted you, and I apologize. Is this going to be Ezra? They casted Ezra, and that's the actor there. Iman Esfani. I, holy shit! I'm not angry. So holy crap! That kind of looks like the old. That kind of looks like Ezra. What's hilarious yeah, is well. the here's another picture of him here for people to see. Um, see <clears throat> but basically, though, the the funny thing was a lot of people were talking about uh, the Men in Masood, the guy that was in the. Um, Aladdin, he came out and said that he auditioned for it, but he never made it past the first audition. They never called him back. Mm. <laughs> um, so they had this guy casted, and I looked into this to see what this guy's been in, and I can tell you right now, next to nothing, he's basically a no name. That's he what I like to hear right movie. there. He was in. King that's what Richard, I like to hear, and that's about mm. it. That's, that's what I like to hear. Sorry, right, Disney. Okay, I'm with you. I'm 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 rocking and rolling because that kind. I mean, Ezra's hair a little, little bluisher at times, <laughs> but other than that. So they've casted now Sabine, him, and um, okay. I don't think they announced a Hera casting, though. That's the only thing I didn't see. Yeah. Which is interesting. That would be a really tough one to pick for live action. They have to get that right. They better. Well, so far, they got this one right, so we're <clears> good. <throat> we're, we're good. 
And now we're, what now we're in on the <laughs> absolute holy hell is this? Now we're on to the D23 um, TV show announcements. So oh, I want to get this one out of the way first because we're going to be covering this weekly when this comes out. <laughs> Are you kidding? This is the kids. Uh, this is a kids show they announced on Jedi Adventures. So they had the God, title I hope it's a good. while ago. Please they- don't make it annoying so I can watch something with my kids. Please, Star Wars. Yoda looks like he's uh, very happy. So Why do they have to put Yoda in everything? I know they said he lived for 900 years, but the way Star Wars uses Yoda, he's been alive for 20,000 years because they, they just put his ass in everything. He's the... <laughs> yeah. He's in charge of the Padawans. But I'm going to tell you right now, this character looks fine. This character looks fine. This is questionable because he's going to be too cutesy, I have a feeling. And this one... Tomboyish, you know, smart aleck. Oh god, I can only imagine. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna hope for the best. A little kid show, just relax. <laughs> we judge it as if it's an adult show here on this channel, sir. <laughs> now, are you ready for some real good news? <laughs> well, yeah, that's not what that was gonna come up. So, Andor, <clears throat> Andor. So, we have the second trailer come out. I've officially yeah. avoided all trailers of everything. <clears throat> Sorry. Third. Um, but yeah, second trailer for Andor, more of the same. Also, just kind of showing some extra shots. But yeah. um, definitely really exciting. It looks so nice. Good. I'm glad that. Oh, what's and this? Along with that, they had three character posters they put out. So on the left, yeah, Andor, middle, um, on Mothma. And I don't remember them saying the name of uh, Skarsgård's character. But the other row, basically. Know. But I'm not mad at all these. They're, they're, they're kind of cool looking. I'm not, I'm not mm-hmm. triggered. Rail? Nice. Luth, Luthan Rail? <laughs> Glitter says 50 he, billion years. He, he goes to the skate, skate park on his uh, weekends off. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you right now, um, after the first episode, since if we're going to go by the track record that is Disney, I'm going to well, be so excited. One, so. Well, whatever. The first time we get to talk about this show, I'm just going to stare at the face of Kachung the entire time because he is setting himself up for the biggest failure ever. Because he's no. like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This no, is going to be good. Not this time. Not this, this is, time. This okay. isn't no Boba Fett. This is. <laughs> you finally, this is you finally a lot of unknowns. Out. It's not, you know, hype crap. <laughs> You guys realize that if I could just bend the ear of somebody in charge of Star Wars and said, if you just made a normal Star Wars, don't try to check any boxes. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just make a fun adventure show. Basically, it's going to be elevated. Work. It's going to be elevated to be 10 times better than it actually is. Just because so- everyone's just waiting just for a normal show, just for normal, just fun adventure show. Like You don't have to do anything crazy. But yeah. All right, but I like those. Oh, oh, good lord! What and the then hell? they had this was my favorite. I recognize that nose from anywhere. <laughs> so they announced uh, so they showed the trailer off for Tales of the Jedi, and here's the fun part: they made an announcement on the episodes because there is an anthology series following different stuff. We're getting three episodes following Count Dooku, and. Uh, obviously, those episodes will have Qui Gon. They'll have Mace Windu, him leaving the Jedi Order, probably, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're gonna get three episodes with Ahsoka. Um, one probably with her as a kid. Another one when she's after um, Clone Wars, because we see with the Inquisitor, and another one with whatever else. And then there's also gonna be um, uh, what they call it. There were some other ones too, but they've been keeping a lot of it hidden. But I think the Count Dooku and the Qui Gon thing is basically the most exciting thing for me coming out. Um, pre episode one, pre episode one, that's exciting for most. Yeah. So I know Samuel Jackson Jackson is a national treasure. I understand that, and I understand that through the power of Hollywood, he never looks like he ages. However, although he was not born on Earth. He is a human-like species. The fact that he doesn't seem to get older in these cartoons. <laughs> that looks like him advanced whenever this man is old. Oh, rep- he's even he's all that, old man. and white haired and like, oh, and he's still the exact same look. 
Yeah, that's pretty funny. He doesn't age, baby. <laughs> and then we had the teaser trailer for Mandalorian season three. Uh, I made my I made my son really mad because I refused to watch it with him, and he got really mad at me. What? So I'll, I'm gonna spoil the trailer. Um, Don't, because I didn't watch it. You yeah, know, very exciting. I'm I'm really. Uh, if I remember correctly, they said it was gonna be December 2023, like when like that time of year. So we still have a whole year away from this. What? Show. Yep. But they, it looks like they've finished filming it. Well, they probably have. They just want to finish the CGI, probably. <laughs> Good oh, job. Man. Just like, quit with the on. bullshit and put it out already. Stop teasing it. Right. I want to see the rest of Book of Boba Fett. Come on. <laughs> they have, like, <laughs> I want to see the rest. I need to know what happens to Boba. Put it out, please. This is the prologue of Boba Fett. But yeah, that's the news. Yeah, the prologue of Boba Fett. So we have, uh, comic-wise, we have two series coming out today. It was Obi-Wan <sighs> issue 5, the last issue of the uh, miniseries. Oh, so, gosh. I should have bought those damn books. But I'm, I've held strong. I've held strong, and I haven't bought the Obi-Wan series. I'm going to regret that. I'm going to blame you, Canadian, that I didn't buy those when they came out. You know that, right? I hope you do. <laughs> Probably flash all five of them for once. Uh, I'm sure these are the that I make later on. I'm like, why didn't I buy those? Hmm. All right, um, we're gonna ignore that. Oh, good god, I need so, this. So, for bounty hunters, there's two variants there's the one on the left. Oh, which I kind of like the, that cover. Um, that cover is cool. That's the Shelby variant, the Shelby, yeah, Deacon Shelby. Yeah, I like and that. It's probably gonna be a cool. connecting one based on the giant figure in the middle. And then on the right, we have the Choose Your Destiny variant for Darth oh, Tyrannus. You I'm bastards. half tempted to get that one. They've de- they've definitely done well with those. Yeah, they're choosing, but what they're are really they? Choosing the better characters. What are they though? They're got to be like what? Ten bucks? Twenty bucks? No, they're oh, regular priced. They're regular variant. Oh, they are. Oh shit. Okay. Because they want you but to buy some... every single one, and then they need people to. Have Do you see though why I made the decision not to buy any? Because this is what happens if I if I. Well, first of all, I'd drive like two hours to the Lyra's comic book store. But if I did, I would end up coming out with like 20 bucks, paid 100 something bucks, and don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. Some of them might be hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, I would more, imagine. More popular ones. Like oh, good three. Lord. And the, the other two variants for Obi-Wan were the one on the left. Uh, I don't remember the artist for that one. He tell me this is a high dollar one, right? This is a high dollar no, one. No, it's just like a B. It's a Regular. B Son of a bitch. And then the right is the, uh, again, the Choose Your Destiny, but it's the High Republic character. Yeah, that doesn't look like Ewan McGregor. <laughs> That's not, it. actually. What a terrible artist. Looks you nothing like. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is a volume eight for Star Wars. It's the um, Crimson Rain coverage of comics. Wow. I, I have never read these. Do you? Can you give me the rundown of why? I'm sure you have. Actually, I feel like you have told me. Why does he have a yellow lightsaber through this series? So after f- episode five, he loses it, his lightsaber, right? So he goes on a journey, and he's trying to learn more with Jedi stuff. And eventually, he comes across a um, tomb or something. Tomb. He comes across a uh, Jedi tomb, and that's where he gets the lightsaber from. Yeah. So he doesn't make that when he found it? He found he, it. He gets. Doesn't oh. someone give it to him? Uh, kind of. Am I? I can't remember now. I'm trying to recall well, if he off given it or he, yeah, or he found it there because he, he doesn't. Read, he printed it. Yeah. The heck what are you doing? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what are you doing? There you go. That's the end of it. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> Get out of here. Do you remember Rogue One, the, the big creature, the Borgalith? Borgalith! <laughs> are you trying to figure out... It was, hard, out to find, it was what, hard to find a meme with him in it. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to find the truth? Are you trying to force the truth out of her? Yes. All right. Well, I think that's it. I actually think he's a cool character. Um, I think he'd be even a cooler character if Star Wars is a rated R show because he would be, you know... He would actually be like, you know, stuff. Yeah, he would actually be cutting off heads and taking names and things, but it's just implied. So I think that's it. Um, next week, who? What are we doing? I think. Well, I think we should do Cassian. Um. Or maybe. 
I have no idea anything about him outside. Like, is is there much good to with him? I don't know a whole lot about it either. But I... okay, well, it sounds like we're gonna have our new lead next week. It's gonna be Kachung. He's gonna take the lead and <laughs> and, get, and, uh, and and let, let it find down the path of this character. Good. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll do it like we always do, and we. We have a nice long meeting afterwards, and we hash out everything we're going to do for the next two, three weeks, and then uh, not wait until the last minute, the Sunday before the show, and then do it all at once. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. (laughs) Well, all right, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Fun comics. And as always, Glitter and Duct Tape. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you guys next time. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Awkward moment. Do, do, do.